In this video, we're going to be talking more about conservative vector fields. And with this particular problem, we've been asked to find a function f, lowercase f, such that the conservative vector field, capital F, is equal to the gradient of the function f. And if we can find this function f, we're supposed to use it to evaluate the line integral of the conservative vector field, capital F, along some curve C. And that's what this notation is here. It means the line integral of the conservative vector field F along the curve C. And we've been told that our vector field, capital F of X, Y, Z, is equal to this vector function here, Y, Z times I plus X, Z times J plus quantity X, Y plus 2, Z times k. We've also been told that c is the line segment connecting the points 1, 0, negative 2 and 4, 6, 3. The first thing we want to do is find this function f. If we can find it, then we want to use it to evaluate this line integral. So finding the function f is going to involve a couple of steps. The first thing we want to do is recognize that we have this vector notation here, and we have coefficients on our i, j, and k terms. So let's go ahead and identify those. We have the coefficient on i, the coefficient on j, and the coefficient here on k, which is this binomial term here. So we have these three coefficients. What we want to do is set those equal to p, q, and r. You'll see notation sometimes like that. p is equal to y, z, q is equal to x, z, and r, we'll call it, is equal to quantity x, y plus 2, z, like this. And sometimes you have a two variable function instead of a three variable function where you just have x and y. And in that case, you won't have this function r. You'll just have p and q. And you'd also just have these i and j terms here without any k term or coefficient there. But in this case, because we have three variables, x, y, and z, we have p, q, and r. Now, the function p here is the same thing as the partial derivative of our function lowercase f here with respect to x. So what we say is the partial derivative of f with respect to x, of x, y, z, is going to be equal to this same value here, y of z. So we're really just changing notation. We also want to say that the partial derivative of f with respect to y of x, y, z is equal to x, z. And the partial derivative of f with respect to z of x, y, z is going to be equal to x, y plus 2, z. Once we have our partial derivatives, we can really start working on finding our original function f. We're kind of close in the sense that we have three partial derivatives of f, but we need f itself, the original function. So in order to do that, what we'll do, we'll follow the same process every time when we have this kind of a problem. We'll take our first function here, partial derivative with respect to x, and we'll integrate it with respect to x. When we do that, we'll get back to our original function, f of x, y, z. So if we say here, we're going to take the integral. The left-hand side, when we take the integral here, becomes the original function, f of x, y, z. And remember that we're taking the integral of this function with respect to x. So when we take the integral with respect to x, we get f of x, y, z like this. y and z are both constants, so we just have this constant value. We're going to add an x onto the end of it and get yx times z, or if we just reorder our variables, x, y, z. So that's our integral, except that we have to add to this, just like when we take a normal integral in single variable calculus and we add c to account for the constant of integration. Well, we have to account for our constant of integration here. But because we integrated with respect to x, we have these y and z variables left over. So what we're going to do is add to this a function of g in terms of y and z, because we have to account for both of those. We didn't integrate with respect to y or z, only with respect to x. So we have to add this function g in terms of y and z. So this would be acceptable, except that we need to find a value for g of yz. The way that we're going to do that is to take partial derivatives of this function, f of x, y, z, in terms of both y and z. When we do that, we're going to try to compare those to our partial derivatives with respect to y and z that we already have over here and hope that we can use them to find a value for this function, g of y, z. So taking the partial derivative of this with respect to y, so we get partial derivative of f with respect to y of x, y, z is going to be equal to x, z, and then the partial derivative here will just be g sub y, the partial derivative of g with respect to y 
of y, z, like this. Now we also want to take the partial derivative of this function with respect to z, so we're going to say the partial derivative of f with respect to z of x, y, z is equal to, and so keep in mind that we went to here and we also went to here like this. So partial derivative with respect to z, x and y, holding them as constants, act as a coefficient on this first degree z term here, so we have x, y, plus here we're taking the partial derivative of this function g with respect to z, so we're going to get g sub z of y z. Now this is where we want to start comparing, because notice here that we have the partial derivative of f with respect to y, and we have the same thing here, partial derivative of f with respect to y. So because these left-hand sides are equal, that means we can compare the right-hand sides, and we can take this value here, xz, so we're going to say xz, is equal to this right-hand side over here, xz plus g sub y of yz. And what we can see is that we have xz on both sides. We can subtract xz from both sides, and we'll get 0 is equal to g sub y of yz. We also want to compare our partial derivatives of f with respect to z, so you can see that we have one here. We have another one here, partial derivative of f with respect to z. If we compare the right-hand sides, what we'll do is say xy plus 2z, which we got from right here, is equal to this right-hand side, is equal to xy plus g sub z of yz. And you can see we have x and y on both sides, those will cancel, and what we're left with is 2z is equal to g sub z of yz. Now remember, the value we're trying to find is g of yz, this value right here. Unfortunately, at this point, we only have the partial derivative of g with respect to y and the partial derivative of g with respect to z. We're trying to get back to just the original function, g of yz. So the way that we'll get back to this now that we have these two, we will integrate this function with respect to y. Because it's the partial derivative of g with respect to y, we want to integrate with respect to y. On the right-hand side here, we have 0, so if we integrated, we just get a constant, except that because we have two variables here, y of z, and we're integrating with respect to only y, just like here when we integrated with respect to only x, we had to add this g of the other two variables. Well here, because we're integrating with respect to only y, we have to add another function with respect to the variable we're not integrating with respect to, which is z. So when we integrate this, we get g of yz is equal to h, another function that we're naming, h of z. Because we integrated with respect to y, we didn't account for z, so we have to account for it here. So we have this function, h of z. Now if we integrate the partial derivative of g with respect to z with respect to z, then of course we'll get g of y z, integrating this with respect to z, we get z squared is equal to z squared, but again, we have to add to that a function in terms of the other variable. So the other variable was y, because we integrated with respect to z, so the other variable is y, so we'll add to that ky. So now we have two equations that both define g of yz, and that's what we need. We need g of yz here, but this one defines it in terms of h of z, and this one defines it in terms of k of y, and we would need to solve for those two functions in order to plug a value back in for g of yz. So how are we going to find at least one of those? Well, here we can see that our left-hand sides are equal, right? We have g of yz equals some right-hand side, and g of yz equal to some right-hand side. So what we do is set those equal to one another, and we get h of z is equal to z squared plus k of y. And what we can see here is that h is some function in terms of z. Well, the function in terms of z on the right-hand side is z squared. So we match up these two, and we say h of z is equal to z squared, there's nothing in terms of y on the left-hand side, and we have k of y on the right-hand side. So k of y has to be equal to 0, because there's no y variables over here, so we say k of y is equal to 0. 
And now you can see we've solved both of these for the same thing, right? We said h of z, we found that was equal to z squared, so we can say equals z squared. Here we said k of y was equal to zero, so if we get z squared plus zero, this is equal to z squared. So we've solved both of these equations and shown that g of yz is equal to z squared. We've shown it with two different equations, and so we can go ahead and plug z squared back into our function f of x, y, z, and we get f of x, y, z is equal to x, y, z plus z squared. We're just taking this z squared value, which we know is g of y, z, and plugging it in for g of y, z here, and now we have our function f of x, y, z, which is the first half of our problem. The second half of our problem is using this function f to evaluate the line integral here of our conservative vector field f. Well, we know that f, capital F, is equal to the gradient of lowercase f, the function we just found. So instead of this notation here, because these two are equal, we can plug in gradient of f for capital F here and say that we want to evaluate the line integral over c of gradient of our function f dr. We know already that conservative vector fields are independent of path, which means that the value of the line integral is going to be the same as long as the terminal point and the initial point are the same. In other words, given an initial point here, 1, 0, negative 2, and a terminal point, 4, 6, 3, it doesn't matter which path we take through the vector field to get from this point to this point. Because we know that f is a conservative vector field, we know the line integral will be the same regardless of the path that we take, which means that this value here we just found, we can use the fundamental theorem and just say that this is going to be equal to, and I'll write it over here, f of our terminal point, so we're going to say f of 4, 6, 3, minus f of our initial point, so f of 1, 0, negative 2. Two. So we just need to evaluate this, and that will be the line integral over our curve C, where the curve C is the line segment connecting these two points. So that just means we're plugging 4, 6, 3 into our function here, f of x, y, z. So when we do that, we'll get 4 times 6 times 3, so 4 times 6 times 3, and then according to our function here, plus z squared. Well, z is 3, so we'll get plus 3 squared. And then we'll subtract from that whatever we get when we plug in 1, 0, negative 2. So 1 times 0 times negative 2, 1 times 0 times negative 2. And then we add to that z squared, so we have negative 2 squared, or just 4. So we'll get 4 there. And now we simplify. So we get 4 times 6 is 24, times 3 is 72. 3 squared is 9, so 72 plus 9 minus 1 times 0 times negative 2 is, of course, 0. So we get minus a positive 4, or just minus 4. And when we simplify here, we get 77. So 77 is the value of the line integral of the conservative vector field f over the line segment c when this line segment is connecting the points 1, 0, negative 2, and 4, 6, 3.